Hi, Greg Clark from the Centre for Public Christianity, and I'm speaking with Professor John Lennox from Oxford University, the author of God's Undertaker, and we're discussing the issue of debating with atheists and what it's like. John, you've uh, had a number of discussions and even uh, formal debates now with uh, people like Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens, most recently with Christopher Hitchens. How did you find him as a person? Christopher Hitchens and I seem to get on very well together. I mean, I find that one of the very important things about these debates is to try to get to know someone and to get inside their mind a little bit and try to see what they're thinking, but above all, to engage in friendly debate. Mm. Because I'm a great believer that you cannot impose truth by force. And so my motivation is let's debate these things in a friendly manner. Let's get them out in the public square so that people can make up them, their own minds for themselves. Mm. What's the, uh, at the heart of Hitchens program, do you think? What drives him in his, uh, in his talks, in his public appearances? What's, what's keeping him going? Well, of course, it's very difficult to judge another man's motivation. And I can only judge from reading his books like God is Not Great, which is the recent bestseller. And there I find that he, he's making a critique of religion, all religion, really. And I find I agree with most of it. For example, in the Edinburgh Festival debate, he kicked off because the motion there was the new Europe should prefer the new atheism. And he started the debate by telling us of the evils of extremist fundamentalist religion of various kinds and so on. And I find myself instinctively agreeing. So that what I'm saying here is that the analysis often is right, at least up to a point. Where I disagree is with the solution. There does also seem to be a lot of resistance among atheists uh, to the idea that atheism itself may have led to some social evils. Um, you read that you know, religion drives people to war, but that, that's often not uh, accepted when you're looking at atheist agendas like the kind of totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. That's right, and that concerns me a lot. I mean, I expect atheists to be anti-theology. That's clear by definition. But what I don't expect them to do is to be cavalier about history. And I think they're wrong about history in two directions. First of all, a lot of what they say about religion is right. It has led to war. But if you look at Christianity, and that is of course where I sit, so it concerns me most of all, I notice that Christendom was involved in atrocity, not by obeying Christ, but by disobeying him. And I think that's very important to point that out, that that cannot be, by definition, genuine Christianity. But I agree with you. One of the tactics that seems to be adopted by the new atheists is to blame religion for a lot of evil and exonerate atheism. Now, you cannot have your cake and eat it. And I think, again, that the history of the 20th century is so clear. Dawkins, for example, says, and I put it to him in my debate with him, that he cannot imagine an atheist who would bulldoze cathedrals like Notre Dame or Chartres and so on. Well, Stalin did exactly that. I visited many of them. Now, that kind of attitude to history really concerns me. What about Jesus, the figure of Jesus? Is the figure of Jesus under attack by these atheists? Yes, in various ways and in curious ways. Uh, in studying the works of the self-styled four horsemen of the apocalypse, that's Dennett, Dawkins, Harris and Hitchens, it's very interesting that they all agree on saying that the existence of Jesus is in dispute among historical scholars. Well, I'm not a historical scholar, so the first thing I did is to check up, and you have a, an eminent uh, historian here, Professor Graham Clark in Australia, and he makes the point that under scholars the evidence for the existence of Jesus is overwhelming. Now that disturbs me. Here are these men that are claiming the intellectual high ground and yet on a simple fact of history they are simply wrong. That undermines my confidence in many of the other things they say. What about the character of Jesus? I mean how easy is it to impugn the character of Jesus? Uh, I once heard John Cleese talking about uh, making the movie Life of Brian 
saying that they tried to ridicule Jesus, but it was just impossible. He had such integrity. Do you see yes. that kind of ridiculing going on? Not so much mm. for the same reason, I think, that people can perceive. After all, and I made this point in the debate with Christopher Hitchens last week, and the point was simply this, they ought to be applauding Jesus because he was against hypocritical, bogus religion that exploited the poor and so on. He was against violence. He told his followers to put away the sword. So they ought really to be applauding him, uh, you see. But they're not, but there's a reluctant, in Dawkins' book certainly, agreement that he has something distinct about him. What do you think Christian people uh, will take from this new movement? Well, one of the fascinating things about the new atheism is it's not postmodern. Dawkins and Dennett and co, they all believe in truth. There's truth out there. And that really tickles me in a way because so many people have said we're postmodern, uh, the end of truth and everything's gone relative. Oh no, it hasn't. People are usually only postmodern in things that they don't regard as important. I know that's a slight caricature, but it's largely true. But Therefore, they believe in truth. There is truth that's accessible by the human mind so that a debate is possible. The second thing, I think, they've put God on the map again. Very much so. Judging by the number of people that attend these debates or come to lectures, God is very much on the map. And then I think they are pointing up certain things that, as a Christian, we need to take on board. The reputation of Christendom, for example, throughout history has not been an attractive one. And coming up to more modern times, the reputation that Christians sometimes have deservedly, at la alas, um, got for being anti-intellectual. And I think it's very important for people to see that those who believe in God are not anti-intellectual at all. How could they be? The very first commandment is, love the Lord your God with your mind. Some people have forgotten that, I'm afraid. Well, as a man with three doctorates, uh, we take you seriously on that point. John Lennox, <laughs> thanks for being not here. Not at all.